Hello and welcome to lesson number 14, where I'm going to be talking about using the SciPy package for linear regression and interpolation. As usual, there's an accompanying Colab notebook for this lesson linked from Canvas. Uh, it has all the code I'm going to show, so you can try modifying that code and running it yourself. I'm going to cover these topics in two segments. Uh, the first segment is about the SciPy library in general and linear regression. We'll be learning a few functions from the SciPy package, and that stands for Scientific Python. SciPy is composed of all these modules here, uh, and each of them have dozens or even hundreds of functions to do all sorts of different things. But the only two modules we're going to be using are the Interpolate module, which does interpolation, and the Stats module, which we're going to use for linear regression. Uh, but these other modules can be useful as well. So for example, if you've ever needed the exact value of a constant, like the gravitational constant or the Stefan Boltzmann constant, or values for unit conversions. Uh, SciPy's constants module has got your back there. Or if any, uh, if, you, if you happen to um, you know, encounter one of the many faculty in our department who haven't discovered Python yet uh, and are still using MATLAB, they might send you some data in MATLAB's file format. And you can actually read that using the load mat function in SciPy's IO library. Uh, and that reads those MATLAB variables into Python and then you can, you can manipulate them in Python. Um, and there's more. If you need to calculate a frequency spectrum, you need to calculate a statistical test, lots of modules here that are useful. You can find the API documentation uh, for all those modules at the link at the bottom. OK. Similar to date time, uh, we import modules from, from a package uh, using the syntax. From SciPy, import stats. And then from SciPy, import interpolate. These are the two modules we'll be using today. You can also do this more efficiently, uh, like this, from SciPy, import stats, comma, interpolate. So to dive in, sometimes you're going to have some noisy data, right? And you might be wondering if your data is changing over time. Um, and I mean changing over time, but it could also be changing over space, right? The, this x-axis could be either of those. In this case, this is just some made up data. Uh, but you might be looking at a time series of global temperature, looking for change, or atmospheric CO2, or Arctic sea ice, or the frequency of harmful algal blooms, or hurricane intensity, or any of these metrics, right? So you have some data. In this case, the data does have a trend. And by a trend, I'm talking about a linear relationship between x and y. In other words, a slope. In fact, this noisy data here, that can be well described as simply a line with a slope of 5 and a y-intercept of negative 25. And superimposed on that line have been some random variations that I added. We consider these noise. Now, noise and data can come from things like measurement error, uh, such as if your sensor is not really accurate. Or it can also come from real processes of interest, like weather in the atmosphere, or ocean eddies, or randomness in biological growth, just to name a few examples. So we use regression. Regression is a technique that looks at the relationship between one or more independent or predictor variables, your x variables, and a single y variable, a dependent variable. Now, usually before doing a regression, uh, you want to use your background knowledge of the data to make an assumption about the model that relates those two variables. Sometimes a linear model is going to be appropriate, and you might try linear regression. Other times, a linear model is not appropriate. So for example, in this data here, you'd be better served by using a quadratic model. Now, in fact, using the linear model in this second case here, that won't give you any meaningful results. And it would be sort of considered misuse of your data. So you have to be careful here. Choosing to calculate a linear regression is not a way to just passively explore your data. It's an active choice that says, based on what you know about your data ahead of time, you expect the data to have a linear quality to it. And there's one other thing that you should watch out for. Regression uh, works by minimizing the square of the errors. In other words, it tries to minimize the distance between each data point and the regression line. And what that means is it's really sensitive to outlier points. So for example, if something happened in this data here uh, that created these outliers at the end. The, re re the regression line is going to get pulled down towards those values. That's this uh, solid regression line here. The dashed line, on the other hand, is the regression that we want, which is what you get if you ignore those outliers, uh, which you should be doing here. So just something to be careful. 
Okay, so this is how you can do a linear regression on your data using SciPy's lin regress function. And it's in that stats module that we imported earlier. So we call it by saying stats.lin regress. And then you specify the x values and the y values from your data as these two arguments. Uh, and these should be uh, 1D arrays of the same length. And then this function actually gives back five output variables, similar to how we saw the subplots function uh, in matplotlib give us back two output variables, a figure handle and an axis handle. Same thing here. Um, except here, those outputs are slope and intercept. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but we also get, for the regression, uh, the r value, which is the correlation coefficient, and then the two-sided p-value. I'll talk more about those in just a second. Uh, and this last one is the standard error of the regression. And that tells you about the average distance of the data from the regression line. So as you might imagine, a smaller value of standard error indicates a better regression. But first, um, sometimes you don't need all the output variables from lin regress uh, or another function. This works for other functions too. So I just want to point out that you can ignore those output variables by sending them to what we call a throwaway underscore character. Um, this place basically just a placeholder here. So say we only wanted the slope, the intercept, and the standard error, and we didn't really care about r value or p value. We could just give those two outputs to these underscores. So this notation just keeps things a little tidier. OK, so what is the r value, this correlation coefficient? Well, it turns out we don't actually use the r value. Um, instead, we more often use the r squared value, which represents the goodness of fit, or in other words, how well the regression did. Now, statistically, this represents the fraction of variance in your y data that is able to be explained from your x data using the regression model you just calculated. So an r squared of 1 means that the regression can explain 100% of the variance. And that only happens if your data is a straight line already, right? An r squared of 0.5, that means 50% of the variance is explained. And that's a more common situation with real data. An r squared of 0 uh, suggests the regression is a really poor fit, and you shouldn't be doing a regression in the first place. OK. And then the regression also gives you what's called a p-value. And a p-value can tell you whether the trend found by the regression is statistically significant or not. And technically speaking, it represents the probability of obtaining the given regression slope that you got if the null hypothesis were actually correct. And here, what I'm talking about with the null hypothesis, that means the hypothesis that there is no slope. So smaller p-values express higher confidence a p-value under 0.1, that means you can reject the null hypothesis at the 90% confidence level. A p-value under 0.05, uh, so a common criteria for identifying a significant trend, that implies 95% confidence in the slope that you found. And then a p-value under 0.01, that's a very high standard, and that represents 99% confidence in your slope. Here's the thing, though. P-values are frequently misused in science. A small p-value uh, says nothing about the appropriateness of the regression model you've chosen, for example, linear versus quadratic versus other type of regression. So yeah, you can use p-values, um, but just use them with caution. OK, so how did a regression do for this data, uh, the one that I showed earlier, which I've created using a slope of 5, an intercept of minus 25, uh, and then some noise here. So I plugged uh, these x and y values into lin regress. And I've uh, done that in this line of code here. And it tells us the slope is 5.77, pretty close. And the y-intercept is minus 28.7, again, pretty close. It also says the r-value is 0.53, which means this regression line here, that explains about 50% of the variance in this noisy data. So not bad. And then the p-value here is something to the minus 8 power, so basically 0, right? And that means we have basically full confidence that a trend does exist just as our eyes uh, tell us over here. And then standard error here is 0.94. Cool. So that's linear regression. Um, I just want to mention a common situation, uh, which is you know, you're trying to calculate a regression of a time series. And your x values are, instead of numbers, they're an array of date times, because it's a time series. Uh, SciPy's linear regress can't handle date times. So what you have to do is import matplotlib.dates as mdates. And then you, you can use the mdates.date to num function to convert that array of date times 
uh, into numbers that represent days since January 1st uh, of the year one uh, of the Gregorian calendar, uh, plus one day. So some sort of irrelevant datum. Uh, and it, it doesn't really matter what days, uh, what, what day this, this happens to be referenced to. Um, the, the really important thing is that they're numbers, not date times. Um, you have to be aware, though, that the trend you're going to get is now going to be uh, in units of your y value units uh, per day, because the x values now are, are days here. OK, that was a lot. Um, that's linear regression. I will uh, see you in the next segment to talk about interpolation.